Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, April 7th, 2021, a commentary on verse 3 of Surah Al-Baqarah by Sheikh Muhammad Fawzi Al-Karkari Qaddas Allah Sirra. The Divine Provision. Allah Ta'ala says about the believers in the unseen that they spend of what we have provided them. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Thanks to their connection with God, they recognize that all provision is from God, not from themselves, for their souls are at peace and have returned to their Lord. And that is the end of it. They cannot claim that they have earned anything or acquired anything or inherited anything. That is no concern of theirs. If you uphold your ego and claim that you achieve anything on your own, you set yourself up as partner with God. The one who becomes tranquil through remembrance and returns to God through observing the link with Him, such a person can no longer say I, but only He. Even his own body is no longer his, but merely a vehicle for God's blessings. His soul is completely detached and directed towards God. Allah says, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ Of what we have provided them, denoting a part, not a whole. The soul recognizes that only a part has been allotted to it, not the whole. If it laid claim to the whole, it would become tyrannical and deny God's law. But it knows that whatever is allotted to it by God's law, whether by inheritance or labor, is a blessing from God unto it, not its own possession. Therefore it returns this blessing to its Lord, and this is the meaning of yunfiqun, they spend. They are not stingy, but generous with what God has provided them. These are the ones who believe that Alif Lam Mim is a book, and that prayer is a book. As for those who ascribe or attribute their actions and possessions to their own selves, they set themselves up as partners to God and therefore remain between the brackets of fate instead of entering the circle of faith. The people of faith are annihilated to their own selves, aware of their own powerlessness except through God, who created them and was generous to them in order that they would recognize these truths and observe their connection to him and have faith in the things he kept unseen from them. There will always be things unseen to you. Even when God reveals a matter of the unseen to you, there will always be something else unseen beyond it. The things that are revealed to you become your seen, your witnessed knowledge, your ilmu shahada. For example, we are sitting here today, but we do not know what tomorrow will bring. Then when tomorrow comes, we will reach what is unseen to us now. But the day after tomorrow will still be unseen to us, and so on forever. The only thing you can reach is the seen, never the unseen. These then are the reverent, al-muttaqun. Now, verse 4 of Surah Al-Baqarah reads, And who believe in what has been sent down to you, and what has been sent down before you, and who are certain in the hereafter. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ Allah says, And who believe in what has been sent down to you, the chosen Prophet ﷺ. They believe in his sunnah, in all that he said, did, and approved, even if they had not seen it firsthand. Then Allah says, And what has been sent down before you, before the Prophet ﷺ was in his human form. What was sent down to the Prophets? Faith, prayer, charity. In general, they believe in the laws that were sent down to the other Prophets before our Prophet ﷺ. Then God says, and who are certain of the hereafter. Certainty, iqan, 
is more than just faith. It is absolute and total belief that you will experience what those who came before you experienced and that what the prophets and messengers told you about the afterlife will come to pass. Let's turn to Iman and Islam, the testimony of faith. We can view the pillars of Iman with reference to the acts of Islam. The pillars of faith can be viewed with reference to the acts of practice and submission. The Prophet ﷺ said that there are six pillars of faith. The first is belief in God. The first pillar of Islam is the Shahada, La ilaha illallah to bear witness to God with one's heart and innermost secret, which is produced by intense faith and nearness to God, to worship God as if you see Him. After bringing together the six pillars of Iman and the five of Islam, then comes Muhammad Rasulullah, which is to bear witness with your outer being to the words, deeds, and approvals of the Prophet ﷺ. To say La ilaha illallah is to bear witness to God with the eye of your heart, your inner being, by observing the connection between you and Him. And you can see the Prophet ﷺ with your physical eyes if you love and emulate enough. He who sees me in a dream truly sees me, for Satan cannot take my form said the Prophet ﷺ. He also says, He who sees me in a dream will see me in the waking world. This is what it means to realize the first pillar of Islam, the testimony of faith. This is why the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say, Ashhadu, I bear witness, and not merely, I declare. If you merely declare the testimony without bearing witness to it, you have only the knowledge of the testimony or ilmu shahada, not the eye of testimony or testimony in itself. And you are far from the truth or the reality of testimony. In other words, you have ilmu shahada, not aynu shahada, and you're far from haqqu shahada. The declaration of testimony, qawlu shahada, is the first pillar of Islam. Then when it is observed with faith and certainty, It leads you to witnessing because you observe a formal link with God and the Prophet ﷺ after perpetual remembrance sets your soul at peace. Witnessing of God is not like witnessing other things, for there is nothing like unto Him. You witness Him with your interior, your heart, your inner eye. Then you have belief in the angels. The next article of Iman is belief in the angelic realm. You believe in the unseen angels, including the two scribes that are assigned to you, one to the left and the other to the right. We always say that in fact there are not only two angels with you, but ten in total. But the conventional knowledge is that there are two recording angels. God says, He it is who blesses you, as do his angels. So we have angels who invoke blessings on us, as God does, constantly and without cease, that He may bring you out of darkness into light. So how do you bring your belief in the unseen down to the level of eyewitnessing? It is that when you see God's light, You believe that God and His angels are blessing you always for one purpose, to bring you out of darkness into His light. The light of faith which God casts into your heart and which increases and decreases by means of action is what allows you to see God with your heart and to witness the Prophet ﷺ whom God calls an illuminating lamp. Siraj and Munira, both a sun and a moon. If you see this light like a lamp and a moon, this means that you bear witness to the light of the Prophet. 
then if you reach the level where every time you invoke blessings upon the Prophet وسلم, you see a light in front of you, what does this mean? Remember that we quoted the verse, He it is who blesses you, as do his angels, that he may bring you out of darkness into light. Allah says, O you who believe, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, not O you who submit. And again, truly God and his angels invoke blessings upon the Prophet, O you who believe, invoke blessings upon him and greetings of peace. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So the believers are those whom God and the angels bless so that he takes them out of darkness into light. And what does this light bequeath them? It bequeaths them the Lord's command that they invoke blessings and peace upon the Prophet ﷺ perpetually. No one can engage in this perpetual and tireless invocation unless he has first received this connection to God and the angels. O you who believe, invoke blessings upon him. There is no mention of time here which means that this invocation is supposed to be constant. This is God's own description of the believers. If someone does not invoke much blessings on the Prophet ﷺ and finds it tiresome to invoke God, this means that he is not a mu'min, but only a Muslim. He's not a believer, but merely a submitter. Let's now turn to the meaning of bearing witness and link these with the stories of Moses and Abraham. Now we have said that the testimony of faith means to bear witness to God and to the Prophet ﷺ. Yet, how do you bear witness to something you have not seen? In a court of law, witnesses tell of what they have seen and swear that it is the truth. If a witness says that he was not present at the incident but only heard about it from others, his testimony will be rejected. Yet you say, I bear witness, ashhadu, as though you were present to see God and the Messenger ﷺ. We are not saying this to condemn your testimony, but only to inspire you to think about what it means. Have you ever seen the Prophet ﷺ in a dream or in the waking world? Have you seen your Lord? The answer is in your heart, in your interior, not your exterior. You may protest that your Lord cannot be seen, that there is nothing like unto him. Yet God himself says he is with you wherever you may be. And he says God is the light of the heavens and the earth, the likeness of his light. So he gives you likenesses of himself so that you may witness him and know him and make good on your testimony of faith. Our master Moses والسلام, said, My Lord, show me that I may look upon you. If he cannot be seen, why did his prophet ask to look upon him? God answered that he could not see him, but he did not condemn his request or call him an unbeliever, or expel him from the circle of nearness. Instead, he provided him with a likeness, a methal, look upon the mountain. Undur ila al-jabal. Whether the mountain remains standing or changes, you will understand what it means to be present with God. And the verse reads, And when his Lord disclosed himself to the mountain, he leveled it to the ground. The mountain no longer had any existence. Moses والسلام, understood the message and how if God had shown himself to him, he would have been leveled to the ground just the same. Thus, he knew the meaning of I bear witness that there is no God but God. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. We also have the example of Sayyiduna Ibrahim وسلم, The verse about him reads, Thus did we show Abraham the dominion, the malakut of the heavens and the earth, that he might be of those possessing certainty. 
When night darkened around him, he saw a star and said, This is my Lord. But when it set, he said, I love not things that set. What star did he see? Was it one of those we see in the night sky? Surely not, for we see a great many stars, yet he only saw one. This means that he was not looking at the sky at all, but was alone in his place of solitary vigil, contemplating the question that had come to his heart. Any child knows that the sun, moon, and stars are in the sky. How could you imagine that Abraham, the great prophet and intimate friend of God, would see a star in the sky and immediately believe in its divinity? This is simply nonsensical. It was something altogether more profound. The verse reads, When night darkened around him, that is, and he could no longer see his surroundings, God illuminated his heart, and he saw the light of God like a resplendent star. This is why he said, هذا Rabbi, This is my Lord. Would Sayyiduna Ibrahim والسلام, really see a star in the sky and call it his Lord, like an idolater? Of course not. But when night fell and he closed his eyes and invoked his Lord, he saw the light like a shining star. The Prophet وسلم, said, Do you struggle to see the sun at noon on a cloudless day or the full moon on a cloudless night? They replied, No, Messenger of God. He said, That is how you will see your Lord on the Day of Judgment. And so Ibrahim والسلام, cried out in his heart, This is my Lord. The verse then reads, فَلَمَّا أَفَلَ But when it set, for this star will not remain with you forever, but only give you a glimpse. Then Ibrahim says, he said, I love not things that set. لا أحب الآفلين. For when you see this قبضة نورانية, this handful of light, and then think any other thought, the light leaves you. You must remain linked to God. Thus, when you observe the prayer, which is your link to God, the prayer becomes light, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Prayer is light, and fasting is brightness. as nur For wherever you are, you will see the light of God, for God is with you wherever you are. The verse continues, Then when he saw the moon rising, when the light, in other words, came to him in a form larger and brighter than the star, he said, Ibrahim said in the verse, This is my Lord. The light came closer to him gradually, leaving and then returning all the brighter. Then the verse reads, But when it set, he said, Unless my Lord guides me, I will surely become one of those who are astray. For I will come to believe, in other words, that this luminous likeness is my Lord, though my Lord is without likeness. And this is only a means to see my Lord through my Lord's own eye, and through his light and the likeness which he provides us of it. Allah says, God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The likeness of his light is as a niche wherein is a lamp. The lamp is in a glass. The glass is as a resplendent star. The one that Abraham saw, in other words. This is the star that you are seeking. Dear disciple, if we cannot see it to begin with, we seek the niche, the lamp, and the glass, and then see the star. As for our master Abraham, والسلام, the intimate friend of God, who was not merely a saint, but something greater too, he began with the star, which is the end of the disciple's journey. The verse reads, But when it set, he said, Unless my Lord guides me, I will surely become one of those who are astray. That is, when he sought guidance even after seeing the star, 
the son of guidance came to him. The verse reads, Then when he saw the sun rising, he said, This is my Lord, this is greater. That is, he saw the sun of Gnosis and mystical realities, greater than the star and the moon. When you look directly at the sun, it almost snatches away your sight and reduces you to nothing. All who are upon it will perish. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ This is the station of Ihsan, spiritual excellence, the station of worshipping God as if you see Him. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ If you cease to exist by virtue of seeing Him, فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكْ He sees you. The verse then reads, But when it set, he said, O my people, truly I renounce the partners you attribute to God. To whom did he say this? To those who worship the stars and planets in the sky? How did he grasp the reality of annihilation? By the light of subsistence that God placed in his heart, like a star, a moon, and a sun, through which he recognized that anyone who believes otherwise is an idolater. He saw, in other words, Malakutu samawati wal ard, the dominion of the heavens and the earth. He saw the meanings, not the receptacles, and how those who worship the receptacles attribute partners to the one who created them all. The stars and suns are of the mulk, the physical realm, not of the Malakut, the spiritual realm. The Malakut is to see the light of God. The light of the heavens and the earth is the Malakut, while the heavens and earth themselves are the Mulk. The contents of the heavens are material things, while the Malakut are pure meanings. So he said, returning to the verse, Truly I have turned my face to him who originated the heavens and the earth as a man of pure faith, and I am not of the idolaters. Note that he said originated, fatara, rather than created or khalaqa. To originate means to bring into existence from out of nothing, while to create means to form from something already existent. He created man from sounding clay like pottery, for instance. Khalaqa al-insan. Abraham turned away from nothingness, toward him who brought all things into existence from out of nothing. He became a believer in the unseen, to return to our subject. What, then, is the way to solidify faith in the heart? Read the verse, those who remember God standing and sitting, and upon their sides, and reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. Here it is the creation, يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ Not him who originated, or الَّذِي فَطَرَ For the Messenger of God وسلم, said, Reflect upon God's creation, not God. Reflection upon this creation bequeaths faith in the unseen. This faith in the unseen becomes the truth of the unseen, or حَقُّ الْغَيْبِ when you see the light in the likeness that God provided us of the niche, the lamp, and the glass, and the resplendent star. It is then that you become one of those who worship God as though they see Him. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد